Hey there, it's Daniel from thegoodapps.com where you can get free Google Docs templates and guides. This video is a tutorial for creating a survey in Google Forms. Google Forms are commonly used for a quick and easy collection of some data in a format of survey, usually with a large group of people. And the very nice thing about it is that it's made like a builder where you create sections representing different types of data requests for people to enter. First off, the basics. When you just enter the survey form, you have two sections to begin with, the title with description and the form to create the first question. First up, let's name our questionnaire, which will be just a common poll for services review. And the second field is the description which can expand and get really big, depending on the entered data. And let me expand it with a little description. Now we move on to the first question form, created automatically. But before editing the first form, I split my screen into two parts, to show you changes in real time and how the survey will look to the respondent. Where the left is my form editing workspace and the right part of the screen is how the viewer will see it. Okay, and let's start from naming it. So I press on the untitled question to highlight it, deleting the placeholder text and entering the question that we will make the your experience with service. And then next to it, there's a picture upload button. So, you can attach a picture to almost every element here in the survey. And let's do it. Press on this icon, and here in the menu, select the source, from which you will upload the picture. I'm going to just minimize the window, and upload the image from my desktop, and drag it here. There we go, a logo of the Goo Docs. Then, next to the image upload button, there's a menu that we open up. And all these items are the types of how the ads perform will look to the person. Let's review each one, starting from the short answer that you already have here from the start, which is simply a short answer field, assuming the text that can be fitted in this line. And that's how it looks for a respondent. And continuing, not far from the previous short one, back to the selection, we have a paragraph, which is the same, but means just a longer answer. Here's how it looks for a respondent. The answer line just increased a bit. Now, let me show you a multiple choice, where a person can select only one item amongst the others, and it will then get permanent. So, it will be like, dislike, and don't know. And then there's an option to add an other field. Let's press it, where a person can reply with text if he thinks that no answer suits him. Now, as a respondent, I can select either of these three options, like it's a checkbox. Or I can reply with text in the other field. Now moving on to checkboxes, which is almost the same, but just looks more of a survey type. Although here the person can select multiple items as an answer. Let me update it. And this is how the respondent will see it. The same checkboxes, but I can select multiple. And the other field so a person can enter a custom answer. Now let's switch it to drop-down, which obviously unfolds once you press it. And this is actually the same as multiple choice, where a person can choose only a single option, but with no other field. The difference though is in the displaying type, which just makes the form look smaller. And here's how it looks in the end a very small form with just a single field. Okay, then we have such a thing as file upload, 
which is what it is. More specifically, a file upload to the form owner's Google Drive. And this option is available only for signed in to Google users. So let's press continue. And here it allows us to set permissions for the file format, which is only specific file types. Where, as you can see, you can define which file formats are allowed. Number of files per user and the maximum file size. Via this link, you can go straight to the upload destination folder on your drive. Now, here's how it looks from the interviewee point of view. And here I'm going to emphasize that this option is available to only signed in to Google users. So, I got a single button here, Upload File, that I press on. And here I can select the upload method, which is from either a computer or from my Google Drive. Now, opening the selection menu again and moving on to the linear scale item. And the linear scale is commonly used to let people rate something. Like, on a scale from 1 to 10, how much did you like our services? And here you can select the number of items, from 0 to 10 maximum. And of course, set the start and end points. Like bad and good which will allow people to rate your services from a bad 0 to brilliant 10. Let me update. And in the end, it looks just like you would expect it to look. Next up in the selection, we have a multiple choice grid, which is similar to the linear scale, only that now there are multiple rows. Unlike with single only with linear scale. Let me create a few. And name the columns with good, bad, and don't know. And on the right, update the view for the respondent. So yeah, this is a grid with rows and columns. In rows we ask questions, in columns we suggest short replies. And the person can select only one item per one row. And the column count will depend on how many options you offer. Back to the selection. There is a checkbox grid, where, of course, similar to the checkbox item before, among the offered answers a person can select a few at once. Let me update it. And on the right, I just select a few ones. And then it's even simpler, the date asking the person to enter the required date. And next one is the time. Now let me update it and show you. So, two items where you enter the appropriate time. And that's it for questions. Now, a bit about the form layout and its controls. On the right, you have the control menu. From top to bottom, add a question that adds one more question form. You know it. Then it's the import questions, meaning importing them from another Google form created earlier. Here you select one. Let me close it. And then it's add title and description, when you want to separate questions into different sections to touch on multiple topics in a single form, where each section has its own name and its unique questions. Back to the controls menu, that we can just make an image block with no any question, just an image with a title to customize the form in some way. Or maybe you present your material in the form of an image. Then on the menu, we can add a video block. It will open up like this. And here you either search for a video on YouTube or paste the link to that video on YouTube. Here's mine and select here to confirm so that a person can watch it right here in the form. And the last one in the selection is the add section button, which literally creates one more page in the form. Let me press it. And this is the page break itself, like in a regular Google document. 
Let me update the form for a respondent and show you how it looks. So now the content is divided into two pages. And here's the button to turn the page. You can see the second button here. And the send button. Which is really comfortable, allowing us to separate one type of data from another and turn it into something like an interactive document. A bit of customization now. Concerning the color scheme, you go up to the toolbar on top and press Customized theme here. Here are your options. We can customize the header picture. We can select from what Google offers or upload something yours. I'll go with some random one to demonstrate. That's how it's going to go. Then on the right is the theme color. An outline color of all these blocks. You can see how it changes. Then the background color, allowing us to choose from four options only. And the font style for the entire survey, but it's only four options again. Google Forms is not about customization. Alright, we're good with editing the form, and we want to preview it before sharing. For that, we press this i icon on the top right here. It opens a new page, and here you literally see it from the point of view of the respondent. Just how the person will see it, which is a really handy feature. And now it's finally time to share our survey. Hit this really prominent send button in the top right corner. And here's the sharing menu. This button will oblige every respondent to enter his email address. And if you don't check it, this form may stay anonymous. Below, we can invite specific people via email. Here you enter the person's email address. And then it's like your regular email with the subject and the message itself. Now with this button, you can add other people to manage the form via the email or via the link. The next page is for the most common option of sharing the survey, which is via the link. By just sending it to everyone you want to interview, copy and send. And the last one allows you to embed the questionnaire into the website as an HTML code. Here we go. And there are also such tabs as responses and settings over here. But I leave it for the next video about collecting responses from Google Forms. Hundreds more guides and a lot of free Google Docs templates on the goodocs.com following the link below the video. Like to help share our videos to more people and subscribe to see more guides. I hope we helped you. Thank you for watching.